We're about to break down some round one draft targets for the Dallas Cowboys this year. Before we break down my list, do you guys want more NFL draft videos for the Dallas Cowboys? I do, but I want to show to the bosses that it's something you guys want as well. So back me up, like the video right now. The Cowboys season is over, unfortunately, and it's time to look ahead towards the NFL draft. Now, we are focused in on potential round one draft targets. I'll make note that stuff can and almost assuredly will end up changing. There could be injuries. Different players have their draft stocks rise and fall. Drafting back end of round one, that means you might have some risers and fallers that could get to the Cowboys. We begin with the... Guy who I want to have, but you're banking on getting lucky. Just like CeeDee Lamb all those years ago. It wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. This year's guy, Tyler Linderbaum, the center out of Iowa. I love him. I am far from done with my draft evaluation stuff. I would be very surprised if he did not finish this year as a top 10 prospect for me in this year's class. So you're wondering, okay... Well, was he good at Iowa? Could he be, could he, is why are you so high? Well, he was awesome for the Hawkeyes. And he's been that way for years now as a member of that elite offensive line. One sack, two hits, four hurries, a PFF run grade. I know, PFF, but still, of 96.6, by the way. The Cowboys are drafting 24th, which means I think it is unlikely Linderbaum falls all the way down to you. I said the exact same thing about C.D. Lamb. Now, Tyler Biotish wasn't, terrible all year long but among centers I think you're lucky if you can argue he was top 20 top 17 ish Linderbaum I think would be an instant upgrade on the offensive line he would be a center and we'll spend some more time on guard and tackle options in round one but Linderbaum is my dream option for Dallas and I should say dream realistic option for the Cowboys now I want to hear from you guys who do you want the Dallas Cowboys to draft? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, I want you guys to take advantage of it. Head down there and drop a name for me. We'll stick on the O-line now. Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M. He played all over the offensive line for the Aggies. I think he's going to be best in the NFL left guard, which is what the Cowboys would be hypothetically drafting for him anyway. Green is going to be a bit of a divisive prospect, what exactly his role is. And I do think bouncing around the offensive line also impacted him in a negative standpoint. Now, his numbers this year were pretty solid. One sack. Two hits, seven hurries, a PFF run grade not that high of 83.6. But Green was also put in a tough position of playing everywhere except center this year. 81 snaps at left tackle, 408 his predominant spot at left guard, 106 on the, at right guard, 142 at right tackle. That shuffling is really difficult for any NFL player, let alone a college prospect. You're asking it to have different technique and footwork consistently throughout the year. So I think some of the more minor struggles could be blamed on that. Back end of round one, I think he makes a lot of sense for the Cowboys. Now, we'll see what happens in free agency, etc. And you don't ever want to lock into one position. But if it were all equal... What position would you want to draft in round one? It's a different way of asking what do you think the biggest need is, so sound off for me in the comments. These players, by the way, are not ranked. So let's go to Jordan Davis next. This would be outside of the fat guy touchdown, maybe. It was an offensive score, of course. I think drafting Jordan Davis in round one would be the epitome and high point of the fatties only campaign jordan davis can stop the run as well as anybody he is a massive human being who can clog run lanes and make life easier on your other defensive linemen and on your linebackers the issue is for davis he doesn't bring much of anything as a pass rusher in by the way under 50 percent of the snaps for georgia this year he was a rotational player on that loaded defensive line two sacks a pressure rate of just 6.3 so for those of you saying there's no way jordan davis makes it to dallas's pick 
I think there's a good chance that he is on the board. In fact, that limited impact in the pass rushing area, I could see him sliding even past the Cowboys pick, depending on who else is on there. Some other defensive line guys. I think the only other potential round one option here is DeMarvin Leal out of Texas A&M. I think his stock has not gone the way it was supposed to go this season. I think Logan Hell or Hall, fellow UGA prospect, Devontae Wyatt, Fidarian Mathis, could be good more day two options for the Cowboys along the interior of that defensive line. Got some Cowboys gear deal alerts for you. Cowboys hoodies up to 30% off at chatsports.com slash Cowboys. Hoodie link will be in the comments section and in the description. You can get the player-based one. The Micah Parsons one actually looks pretty good. The color and font looks really good on that one uh, for whatever reason, at least to me. Tons of variety, different styles and fits and colors. Quarter zips also included in this deal. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Hoodie. This deal is only available for a limited time, so don't delay. Take advantage. I'll put the link for you guys in both the comment section and in the description. More Georgia players. We're not even done with the Georgia guys. This is the Bulldogs segment of today's show. Trevon Walker out of UGA. He had flashes of brilliance this year for Georgia. Now, I think this is another divisive prospect. I think some teams and scouts will have him as a top 15 player for what he could end up being. I think others might have him as more of a mid-ish round two type of grade. I do think there is some tweener traits here. When I say DE defensive tackle, what I'm really saying is, but I didn't want to put it on the graphic because it was really confusing. Talking, is he a 4-3 defensive end? Is he a pure edge rusher? Or is he more of your... Cam Hayward, 3-4 defensive end, that type of player. He's listed at 6'5", 275. He doesn't look it. He, he has a, a very good, not over-heavy uh, build on him. The flashes are impressive. The overall impact wasn't quite there yet. The pressure rate was below 9%. That's not ideal. This would be an upside pick for the Cowboys along the defensive line, which could be a big need for Dallas, depending on what ends up happening with the defensive line. Is Dorrance Armstrong, Randy Gregory, are those two going to be back? Is Demarcus Lawrence going to remain under contract? What do you do with, with, do you trust Chauncey Golston to be a bigger piece for you moving forward? So because of some uncertainty around your entire defensive line, edge rusher could be a need for you come draft day. All right, other edges here. I don't think George Karloftis falls all the way down to the Cowboys uh, later on in, in, in the back end of round one, but never say never. Other guys, Cameron Thomas fits kind of a similar mold and type of prospect as Walker. I like Jermaine Johnson. The Penn State kid's getting more hype, and I don't mind Drake Jackson. I think you could maybe hope one of those guys, you get lucky and fall to the second round maybe. Again, all things being equal, which side of the ball do you want the Dallas Cowboys to draft? Offense or defense? It's O for offense, D for defense. We're going heavy on the defensive prospects since I think those are where your bigger needs at least currently are. But I want to hear from you. O for offense, D for defense. N'Kobe Dean next up here. We are now in the off-ball linebacker portion of today's video. I don't mind drafting a Dean or the other guy we'll get to in a second here in the back end of round one because they offer you three-down ability. Dean has shown he can blitz and cover. So, too, has Devin Lloyd out of Utah. Both these players, I think, would I want to take them top ten? Eh, not so much. Back end of round one, Totally different conversation. Now, Lloyd is a bigger player than N'Kobe Dean. That, that is, that, that's the reality of those two players, that Lloyd has bigger size. And I'm very curious, by the way, how the testing ends up going for those two. Does one of them impress a little bit more? And if so, how does that impact them in their draft stock? I think the Lloyd-Dean conversation is going to be impactful in terms of which off-ball linebacker goes potentially top 15 and which one hypothetically could end up sliding all the way down to the back end of round one for the Dallas Cowboys. So Lloyd and Dean, their numbers here. Lloyd put up better numbers than Dean did this season, and that was partially just the level of competition, etc., all kinds of stuff, but look what they did. Sacks 
interceptions, and pass breakups. All of them made big-time impact plays. Lloyd was certainly a higher-level impact guy in terms of the raw numbers, plus 22 tackles for loss. I think Lloyd ends up being the first off-ball linebacker taken, but that's way too early to know for certain. So who would you rather have? Let's say somehow both these guys are on the board at 24. The linemen, the offensive linemen are gone, and you're looking linebacker here. Type Dean for Nicobe Dean, or type in L for Devin Lloyd. Imagine pairing one of those two with Jabril Cox and then letting Micah Parsons be more of a full-time edge. It's an intriguing idea. Back to the offense now here. Trevor Penning, <clears throat> he destroyed edge rushers at the FCS level. Now, FCS, so there's a big competition jump coming, but I do think Penning ends up being a first-round pick, whether it's maybe in the 15s or the 25s, somewhere in that range, I think is about right for him. Now, he did allow a couple hurries this year, so he did get beat occasionally. Look at his PFF run grade, by the way. 99 flat, which is just an obscenely high figure for the UNI player. Now, again, level of competition, unquestionably a big factor in that, but this is a name to keep an eye out for among the back end of round one offense tackles, which typically aren't as good as the early names. <clears throat> All right, some other names to at least mention here. Nicholas Petit-Friere uh, out of Ohio State. I've got the Michigan game stuck in my head. Can't take him back in a round one. I think he's going to be more of a day two pick for me. Daniel Falele is a massive, hulking human being at right tackle. Another maybe late round one, I think more likely day two option. Keep an eye on Bernard Raymond as well. Kind of fits more in that uh, Trevor Penning range, I think, at offensive tackle. If you guys want free Cowboys videos every single day, hit that big red button and subscribe. We've got them coming out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and everything else. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now. All right, more offensive line talk here. Zion Johnson, who has played both left tackle and left guard for Boston College, which I think always carries value. Now, I do think Johnson will end up being a left guard in the NFL. I think that's the best position for him. I thought he looked better on that sideline. I'll also make note, by the way, he was a transfer. He began his college career at Davidson. This past year, all per PFF, like all these offensive line stats are, one sack, two hits, three hurries, a good enough PFF run grade. Again, the Boston College offense didn't always put Johnson in a tough position to have to hold up in pass protection, so that's why those numbers are a bit lower than you might otherwise expect. I don't love him as that type of pick, but I do think he would be a quality one in the back end of round one as kind of like your fallback option along the offensive line. If, for example, Kenyon Green is not there. Now time for some of the players you're just not going to get. I wanted to mention them because I know how we all operate. Aiden Hutchinson, Kayvon Thibodeau, Kyle Hamilton, Evan Neal, Ika McWanu, in no particular order. You're not getting them unless you sell from moving the top 10 or even top 5. So, not going to happen. Let's talk safety because, God, I would love Hamilton. You're not going to get him. Daxton Hill is probably the next name to watch. Who was really more, by the way, of a nickel corner than anything else for Michigan. He is a willing and successful tackle, who I think is a pretty damn good athlete. With Hamilton not going to fall to you remotely to number 24, I think Hill has a real chance to be safety number two in this class. Now again, nickel corner as opposed to safety, so 4.5 tackles for loss, some pass breakups, very nice tackle production as well with 69. Hill is... I think some teams will view him as a nickel, some as a safety, but that safety you can also roll down cover slot receivers, I think does carry plenty of value. Now, his completion percentage was very high that he allowed, but only 456 yards. He was targeted in total uh, 68 times this year. That's a very low yards per target number allowed, indicative of just playing nickel corner, allowing a bunch of shorter passes in the end. Only allowed one TD. In a not great safety class, Hill was a name to keep an eye out for. Others, kid from Georgia, Lewis Seen, uh, Jaquan Brisker, I think he's going to be around a top 50 guy for me, but does he fall to you in, the, in round two? I'm not so sure. And then I think Verone McKinley, the third at Oregon, is even maybe a little bit further down on that list. 
Now we're going to talk about two more positions here before we go. Wide receiver and corner. I'm grouping these guys together because it's kind of a muddled grouping and I want to have an overall conversation about both spots as well. Which one would you rather draft, wide receiver or CB? The Cowboys could need a receiver again. Three through six, Gallup, Wilson, Turner, Brown are all free agents. Do you trust him? Look, we played seven snaps this year. I don't know how you can. If Cooper's gone, if you move on from him, which I don't want to do, this becomes one of the biggest needs, again, for the Cowboys because you would potentially be down, or you'd probably keep somebody, but you could be down five of your top six guys. Now, there are some great receiver prospects this year. I love Drake London. Outside body, you could use him like Mike Evans, like Jahan Doth. He's probably my lowest-rated guy of these six. Traylon Burks is like a bigger, not-quite-as-athletic version of A.J. Brown. Fun in the slot. Garrett Wilson, I doubt, is there. Can be a number one for you. Olave is a smooth route runner. And Jamison Williams, a name to monitor because he's coming up with the torn ACL. He could slide to you at number 24 overall, and I thought he was not going to previously. Time now for corner. Many of you are like, let's draft a corner again. And I, I understand. I've never had, don't have any issues taking plenty of corners early. Even if you move on from Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis, which is not a guarantee, isn't Kelvin Joseph going to be your guy on the outside? You took him in round two last year. Do you want to draft a nickel corner in round one? I'm not sure I do. So, look, I love Ahmad Gardner. Er, Gardner. I love Sauce. I love Derek Stingley. I doubt they're there. If they are, the value says probably take them. But, again, it's the you've spent so many picks on corner and you've paid both Brown and Lewis, at least for now. You don't really have a big corner need at the current moment. So I like Andrew Booth out of Clemson. I like Trent McDuffie out of Washington. I like Roger McCreary from Auburn, Kair Elam from Florida, many other guys out there. There probably will be a good corner on the board for you, but you never just go BPA. You got to fill a need as well. So unless the need emerges at corner, I don't think it should be a high priority as we sit here in January for the Cowboys.